Do you think your phone looks really boring? What if instead it looked like an actual gaming device, something akin to a handheld like the Nintendo Switch? But you don't know how to do that. Then stick around because I'll show you how you can basically turn your phone into a portable console. And a hybrid one too. Let's begin. First off, let's tackle the problem of the UI because our regular phone doesn't look very inviting for video gaming. Like, just take a look at this. Man, that's just depressing. This is an easy problem to fix, as all you need to do is find the right launcher. There are a few options out there, but the one I use is called Console Launcher. And it's specifically made to mimic the look and feel of an actual game console, which is perfect for this situation. You can download it from either the Play Store, itch.io or GitHub, which is the recommended option, as this one has all the latest features from what I understand. Not the App Store though, per usual. So if you're on an iOS device, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. To unlock all of the customization options, options of console launcher you're gonna have to spend 5 bucks, which I personally did and I think it's worth it. After purchasing the premium version you can now get to customizing the interface by changing the wallpaper, app icons and their shapes, background music, color scheme, setting up the emulator front end if you're into that, and lots of other stuff. With this you can end up with many interesting designs, like this beautiful emulation focused setup, or this one inspired by the PSP, or even this. I have no idea how the f*** this game made this. But I went for this simple look with all the games being displayed right away. It's not the most creative but it works for me since it doesn't take long to make. I'm not playing games on emulators right now, I can quickly add additional games to the collection and this still looks good and like a console. If you want to replicate this look, first you're likely gonna have to remove whatever apps are displayed by default, copy over the settings that you see on screen right now to get the right icon shapes and things like that. After that go to this menu and add the games you want to be shown, then to customize each game hold it down, tap on edit, and here you can change the poster and the banner, with the poster being the small vertical icon and the banner being the background. First look if there are any good ones on Google or the Steam Grid database, and if you don't find anything you'll either have to find them elsewhere or make these graphics yourself. Once you customize each game your collection should look something like this. You can further enhance this by using videos as backgrounds instead of just images, but I'm too lazy for that. Now to take this even further I'm gonna show you how you can set up the emulator front end. I have no idea if this is the right way to do it but it works so that's all that matters. First we need to download RetroArch. It's on the Play Store but my phone is incompatible with it for some reason so I'll download it through the official website. Link is in the description. On the website go to get RetroArch and then download Stable. Let's say we want to play a Super Nintendo game. To do that go to Load Core, download a core, search SNES and choose one I guess. Do your own research on which cores are the best because I have no idea. I'm just gonna choose this one. Then go back to Console Launcher and go to Settings. Then Front End, scroll down to the part that says All Platforms, click on the plus, select the console you want to emulate. Now select the folder where your games are stored and select the core you downloaded here. Also tap on Scrape Media to get the box art for your game in sync files so that every game gets detected. Now at the end of your game list you should see a new folder with your games. All that's left now is to select a game and play. There's a ton of settings you can change here which I'm not gonna bother explaining. There's a ton of tutorials for this out there anyway so once again you've gotta do your own research. If you want you can also set console launcher as the default launcher for your phone. I don't do this personally because it's in landscape only. But if you want to then head over to settings and you should immediately see the set as default launcher option. Press this button, select console launcher. And you're done. Also remember that you can also add regular apps to the menu too, so you're not just stuck with games if you do this. Another awesome feature Console Launcher has is integration with Discord. If you log in with your Discord account and use Console Launcher to turn on a game, it will display it on your profile. Or at least it should, because it doesn't seem to work as I'm making this video. But once this works, this will probably be my favorite feature. I mean, what's better in life than sharing what mobile game you're currently playing with members of the Mobile Games Network Discord, am I right? But if you don't have any games to put on display or you you want to expand your collection, you're gonna have to find new ones somehow. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna assume that you already have games, but if not then I actually have a whole video on the topic which will be linked at the end. So if you have games, you've gotta have a good means of controlling them, as touch controls for some games just feel like shit. But with so many options on the market, the question is which one should you choose? I think there are two main types of controllers that you can get. Controllers that are made to attach to a phone, and controllers that can attach to a phone. I personally use the 8-bit Do 
Blue Pro 2, as it works not only with phones, but also computers and the Nintendo Switch. So for me, a multi-purpose controller like this just made more sense. 8-Bit Duo also has their own controller just for mobile gaming, but other options include the Backbone 1, Razer Kishi and GameSir G8 Plus, among many others. Now these controllers are quite bulky and currently there is no smaller option available, but there will be one in the future and it's called the MCon. It's a controller that attaches to the back of your phone and slides out PSP Go style, and it's at a size where it can easily fit in your pocket. This isn't a sponsorship, I'm just really excited for this controller. Link to its Kickstarter campaign and videos about it are in the description. So now that we've got the UI, games and controllers sorted out, we can take this setup to the next level. And that's gonna be by connecting the phone to a TV or monitor. If you're an iOS user, I think your only option is to buy an HDMI adapter and plug in your device that way. This isn't an option for many Androids as most of them don't support HDMI adapters because their USB port, aka charging port, is version 2 point whatever instead of 3 point whatever. You can research if your phone supports HDMI or not on your own. If your phone does support HDMI, just get an adapter as it's the most convenient and also the best option performance wise. Otherwise you're left with three options. Casting, display link or screen copy. We can get rid of casting right away since there's a ton of latency so it actually just sucks balls for gaming. And so we're left with these two. Now by display link I mean an external display link adapter that acts like a middleman between your phone and TV. Essentially you connect your phone and TV to the adapter via USB and HDMI respectively and also plug the adapter into a power supply. Finally you install the display link presenter app and set it up and that's about it. The adapter I have is the Targus ACP70 and included in the box is the adapter, power cord and a USB type B to type A cable. Since on your phone you have a USB type C port you're also gonna need to buy an additional USB type C to type A adapter. The whole setup cost me like 13 bucks and it works completely fine. Overall this is pretty much the best option for phones without HDMI support. There is a slight delay but it's not really noticeable. Unlike when using the second free option, a magic software called screen copy spelled scrcpy before we get started let me break down exactly what we're doing here we're gonna get the phone screen to display on a tv by first using the screen copy program on a laptop and then connecting your phone to the laptop and then connecting the laptop to a tv via hdmi if you have a pc you're probably not gonna bother moving it to the tv so you can just play on the pc monitor instead this of course means that you don't need a tv in the laptop scenario either you can just play on the laptop but come on this is much cooler. Also, you've gotta keep in mind that since your phone will be connected to your computer via USB while doing this, your phone will start heating up since it's charging, which after a while takes a big toll on performance. Unless you have a phone cooler, then it's not really an issue. The one I have is called the K4, costs like 20 bucks, works very well. So to get screen copy up and running, go to its GitHub page, linked in the description, click on the latest release on the right side, and choose the right version to download. If you're on a 64-bit machine, which is most likely the case unless your computer is f***ing old, choose the 64-bit version. Otherwise, choose 32-bit and consider buying a new computer because what are you doing with your life? Now extract the screen copy folder somewhere. And now go to your phone and on it you're gonna have to enable USB debugging. To do this go to your phone settings, then about phone, and you're gonna have to tap something multiple times in a row. It can be build number or something else. On my phone it's MIUI version. After tapping in a whole bunch you'll unlock developer options. If you don't know what you should tap just search it up like this. Then go to developer options and scroll down until you find USB debugging. Enable it and you're now ready to plug in your phone to your computer. When you plug in you're gonna get this pop up. Check this box so you don't have to see it every time you plug your phone in and accept. If you're using all this USB debugging nonsense for the first time, double click on adb.exe. Now in the screen copy folder type in cmd in the folder path and then in the command prompt type in the command you want. I included a guide in the description and so once you cook up the perfect command for yourself you can copy the command, make a new text document in the screen copy folder Paste the command into the document and save the file with the .bat extension. Make sure to select all files below the file name. By doing this all you need to do is just double click the batch file to start up screen copy with your configuration. The configuration I use will be available in the description. Now at this point you may see that your phone's aspect ratio doesn't match your laptop or monitor or TV, aka there's black bars on the top and bottom. To fix this you can check out my tutorial on changing your phone's screen size which will be linked at the end. Now change your phone's resolution so that it has the same aspect ratio as the TV, in most cases it's gonna be 16 by 9 so the resolution will be 1920 by 1080. 
handy. Note that some games may not display correctly, but most should work just fine. If your game still has a black bar on the left side, that's probably because of the camera notch. To avoid this on my phone, I have to go to settings, look up notch, go to notch and individual apps, find the game with the black bar, and select always show notch. Keep in mind that on other phones, this setting can have a different name and be located somewhere else. Now just connect the controller, boot up console launcher, and enjoy the most stupidly f convoluted way to play mobile games. Or you can always ignore all this and get a cool stand for your phone instead, which will make your life 10 times easier while achieving a somewhat similar effect. Now how well does this setup actually work? For this demonstration I'm gonna play Levelhead, excellent game by the way, and the delay when jumping for example is about 165 milliseconds. It is playable, I can complete levels without much issue, but definitely not ideal. Also some games can react weirdly when playing with this setup, like Swamp Attack, a fantastic tower defense game by the way. For some reason the screen can just freeze sometimes and you have to pause and unpause the game to get it to work again so you know there are some issues but at least it looks pretty dope so i reckon it's worth it like isn't this just awesome because i think it is but anyway if you have any questions drop them in the comments or in my discord server i'll try my best to answer if you found this tutorial helpful like the video and subscribe for more variety mobile gaming content check out this video for finding good mobile games or this one to see how to change your phone's screen size huge shout out to the current members for supporting the channel and have a wonderful day